Hello and welcome to a new episode of Block Tales. I'm Sarah, Managing Director of Blockchain Founders Group, and today I have Nadine with me. And before Nadine starts to introduce herself, we are today uh, live from a um, European Blockchain Convention in Barcelona, both of us. <laughs> and we thought it's super nice to have an in-person meeting. And so this is why we decided to do the episode here today. And so, Nadine, please start. Introduce yourself. Yeah, the, Sarah, thank, oh. thank you so much to, uh, to inviting me to this podcast. Um, I think it's a, it's a great opportunity, especially from a place in Barcelona, to do that and to show us a little bit of the spirit here, um, maybe a little bit to my person. Um, yeah, I'm Nadine. I'm uh, located in Munich, Germany also, and um, yeah, I'm, a, I'm the co-founder of Particula. It's a Wi-Fi startup and uh, yeah. You definitely have to tell us how you get there or how you got there. But maybe first of all, uh, what are your thoughts on the conference? Do you like it? Why did you decide to come here? So um, yeah, maybe you can start with that. Yeah, sure. Um, so it's my first international conference in the Web3 space, uh, which is really interesting to like meet people from everywhere um, because uh, I just uh, went to German stuff yet and it's definitely different. different. Yeah. <laughs> I experienced exactly the same, but please go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, and, and um, I, I, got, uh, uh, I got tickets. Um, funny from you <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because yeah. Yeah. and, <laughs> and uh, yeah my, my co-founder and I we went together uh, it was really spontaneous like a few weeks ago and we were like ah do we want to go it's pretty spontaneous but then we're like okay we have to go because especially when you're such a young startup it's important to yes. be out there yes. to talk yes. with people yes. and to yeah the, to, to know the scene that's true so for me it was like we arrived two days ago and uh, I went in and I didn't know anybody like I went through everybody or I went through the hall and there was like okay I don't know anybody and it really feels strange because if you yeah. sometimes enter a space in, in Germany it's like sometimes it feels like even coming home because you know yeah. so many people but and this is super positive because if you know already everybody yeah. uh, you can make a lot of new contacts so it's a lot better yeah. if you don't know anybody and yeah, so I think it's super nice here. And um, did you already talk to uh, some people around? So did you meet some nice guys or some like interesting people? Yes, um, yesterday was really, really busy. Um, you can like, uh, for this conference, you have, you got also like an app where you could like um, find all the people who are attending, which is really, really helpful because I'm not sure about like going somewhere and there are like thousands of people and then you just randomly speak to everybody. So I thought it's really good to see up front who's coming and who's maybe also interesting for your startup or your project or what else you're doing. And um, there was like looking for people also who are in a refi space, um, who, do, who are doing something with sustainability maybe and also um, looking for uh, people from the classical industry because um, I think it's interesting to to see them here and um, for instance yesterday I talked to um, Kerstin who is a Web3 global head or something like that uh, of Telekom um, so Telekom in Germany and uh, that was really interesting they are like super into Web3 and they're like super open and um, I think this is an important point because I also experience it that more and more people, especially from huge companies, institutionals, maybe even listed companies, are trying to enter the space. And not only with like one person who is allowed to have a look at the scene, but even more people and like uh, a whole department really trying to figure out what's yeah. going on here. Yeah. And yeah, I think it's a more business related conference. And uh, but there are many, many interesting people. And it's always super important to really meet with the people, because what I experience is like if you only meet online, it's yeah. nice. Yeah, but you sometimes really have to be together with the people. You have yeah. to see them. You have to uh, make like personal contacts, and I think yeah. this is like super, super, yeah, important. 
Definitely. I think um, you get more remembered than like, because I notice when you talk with somebody in computer, they don't really remember you sometimes. But when they know, oh, I met them in Barcelona, they will always keep you in mind. And when they have discussion with others, they're like, yeah, I heard about this one startup. I met them in Barcelona. And so you kind of like have a better connection. Absolutely. This is super important. And especially for you, um, being a young startup in the Web3 space, I think it's yeah. super important to have like some contact points. And yeah, maybe you can tell us your story, how you got into Web3. Yeah. Yeah. And for me, it's super, super nice because you are one of the startups of Blockchain Founders Group. And maybe you can also tell a little about your story, how you started with Blockchain Founders Group and like, yeah, yeah what happened? How did you get yeah. there? <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a really good question and it's actually a hard one because it's such a long journey, I would say, but I, I keep it quick. Um, so maybe <laughs> at first I was always into general technology. I love like, um, you know, read about quantum computing, AI and stuff like that. And then also, of course, you kind of like stumble over blockchain. Yes. And for me, the first time I thought it's some cryptic uh, thing and I wasn't really sure when I first heard about that. Is there really something behind that or is it just hype? <laughs> so I'm not so long in the space, uh, Red 3 people would say, probably like 2021, 20, I, I started like, like, you know, figuring things out. But this and means you're already in the space for one and a half years. Yes, and I mean, people time flies. Still entering, so. <laughs> That's true. And uh, yeah, and my one of my co-founders, I know him for a long time already, and he got first into uh, blockchain and crypto, and then he was telling me about that, and I thought, okay, this sounds interesting, especially like NFTs and stuff like that. And um, yeah, and then uh, we always wanted to found something because we both are, have a very entrepreneurial mindset. And um, yeah, and then he wanted to do something uh, with crypto or blockchain and I always also wanted to do something with impact because um, I was also uh, writing my bachelor thesis about environment, environmental awareness and behavior and why there's this gap. And um, yeah, and then we said, okay, we have to kind of like find a great use case or maybe it's a, it's a great use case. And that's um, how we figured things out, brainstormed. And we had also first ideas and we didn't know anything about the blockchain community in Germany. Like we didn't know Philip Sandmar, like everybody in Germany knows him. Yeah. And also not blockchain founders, group blockchain founders and so on. And, uh, but uh, my co-founder, he had a few books um, also from Philip Sandmar. And we were like, uh, when we had the first um, business idea, we were like, hey, we should write the authors and ask them how they like our ideas. <laughs> to be honest, I think this is a super smart idea. Yeah. I mean, it's like you, you really have to think about what you do. And then writing the author is like, this is just really smart to start like that. Because yeah. It's super hard to figure out whether your idea is a great one or not. Yeah. And to get in contact with the people who write books about a certain topic is like, I, I mean, they know. Smart. Yeah. 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 And uh, Philip, or, Philip answered and we were like, oh my gosh, this, this author, he answered us and it's so crazy. And... But Philip just said, yeah, send me a pitch deck. And we sent him a pitch deck and it was terrible. It was like super, super terrible because we had no clue what we were doing. And um, he was probably, I'm, I'm not sure if he read it, but he just wrote back, do something with Karen. Like, do something okay. with Karen. It's like the hot next topic. Big thing. And we were like, what the heck? What, what should we do with Karen? Like, what should we do with this information? <laughs> because our idea was super different to that. And yeah, and then we like figured it out and... Uh, we, and we didn't plan it actually, but uh, we um, applied with a forest, so we wanted to tokenize forests in Germany. Mm -hmm. And we applied with the idea um, for the BFG because we found out about the, uh, LinkedIn that there's this incubator program. And by the way, I can recommend this incubator program very, very, Thank um, you. <laughs> very, very much. But also in general, when you're thinking about having um, a startup or creating it, I can always recommend doing something like an incubator program or also accelerator program because it's really give you speed and um, it was just helpful and um, things are going faster. So anyways, um, we, have, we applied with the first idea and they took us. We were like, okay, that's crazy. We didn't believe that at first. We were like, okay, but see how it goes. We probably won't go far but we will try <laughs> and yeah now we are here we got also funded by bfg um 
you switched our congratulations eye. by the way thank you super nice. <laughs> it was uh, it was uh, very hard and i can see you already have the merchandise so i can yeah. see your shirt it's also have something here <laughs> ah perfect particular nice it's also a queer <laughs> scan it yes to, cool. to my LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> we already thought about that yeah and um maybe also to our idea um we are building the kind of like the moody's for ESG token or token who are related to sustainability and in the first place of course tokenized carbon credits so there's the carbon topic again <laughs> and uh, yeah we so are like it worked out I mean the idea from it was, Philip yeah, it, it was, was like it worked out yeah it was a good the end your startup it was a good tip <laughs> interesting yeah and so if you if you think about the moment where you started with BFG and now the process where where you are now Like, uh, what happened in between? What was like really the important, maybe tips and maybe uh, points where you kind of pivoted or changed your thoughts? And what did you, uh, yeah, what influenced you within the last months? Yeah, so I think um, the game changer was, I mean, we worked on the idea also before the program. The game changer is when you really have somebody where you have to, like face every week and have to like um, say what you did the last week and yeah, for me is checking you like yeah really somebody pushing and, and and yeah. I'm a person I get really fast embarrassed <laughs> and when, I, when I feel like I I didn't like meet my personal expectation yeah, and then yeah. I have to face somebody and telling them yeah I I don't know I was lazy this week um, I I would feel bad and that's why it gave me the push I needed and that's why we like and also my two co-founders as well and that's why we like pushed each other and was we were motivated and did more and more each week and um, I think that's a that's changed a lot also in my mindset and of course uh, thinking in like business because before that I also had a good mindset because I studied economics and I know like how economic eco economy works but um, it's definitely different when you're like founding your own startup like there's so much to learn. So it helps a lot if you have somebody who's yeah. kind of guiding you through yeah. everything. And so if we go back to the program, what are the most important learnings and maybe what, what are the most important things that you would not do uh, without the program? But because it just didn't come to your mind. So, yeah, I think the biggest game changer is and that's always um, I know I'm not sure if you guys know Philip Sandler, but he's always like preaching go out like you know be present and and talk about what you're doing with people because if nobody knows of you nobody will like buy your product in the end you know and you and you don't know if you're like on the right track with your product and um so outreach was like a really big topic and we as particular we started like really early writing medium articles on linkedin um and producing content uh, besides of course, all the product development and everything. Um, and people nowadays know us and we are, I mean, we're so young, our product isn't ready yet, but people are thinking we are like way further developed and they're like, everybody knows you. When I talk to somebody, they already know you. How are you doing that, guys? And I think that's like the most important thing that you're not waiting and like developing, developing, developing because your product will probably never be perfect. It's It will never, never be. It's it will never always <laughs> a process. Yes. So um, that's why I go out even when there's no product yet uh, and create content because you have a niche and the niche is interesting at least for always for someone. So uh, and you can definitely write something about it. That's what we did, especially yeah. about the refi topic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what I also experience is like uh, it. If there are only like some people who like your product, maybe it's like friends and family, and of course they agree. Like yeah. there's a book out there, it's called Mom Test. And mm. if if yeah. if your family and friends agree on your idea, it's not worth anything yeah. because fa friends and family they're normally not always, honest. <laughs> yeah, they, because they like you and yeah. they want to help you and don't sometimes want to hurt you. They, yeah, they don't want to hurt you, but it doesn't help. It's the other way around. It's the opposite. It doesn't help you if they. They, yeah. they don't lie because they it's yeah. not like a negative thing but it doesn't help you and so yeah. you really have to convince other people 
um, that your product is a nice one. And I think product market fit is, especially at the beginning of the startup, it's the most important thing and the most difficult thing. It is. And so is. Um, you you mentioned the topic of free fire already several times. Maybe yeah. you can <laughs> help us a little what you're talking about and yeah. what the space is about. Yeah. And then we can yeah dig a little, a little deeper yeah. in that area. I would love to talk about that uh, because I feel like not so many much people know about that. Uh, so refi, it sounds maybe similar to DeFi and that's not a coincidence. Um, so it's um, outspoken, it's regenerative finance. Um, and uh, yeah, and I think uh, because it's called refi, um, it's kind of like the ESG side of Web3 or you can also call it like a movement. And um, we as particular, we are already identified like over 500 projects um, worldwide around refi. And maybe to explain what it is, it's refi. So there's no definition like in Wikipedia. You cannot just you Google can't find it. it. You can't find it. It's it's probably more like a subjective opinion about that. Yeah. But usually, it's like incentivizing humans um, to preserve and restore nature um, with the new technology we are we are having. Like. The blockchain technology so um for instance uh you have uh, tokens who have who are backed by co2 or we have also biodiversity tokens social tokens supply chain cir circular economy and so on so really really a lot about um, esg and um with the help of this technology there are incentives possible which weren't in the classical market yet. And that's, I think it's really, really great because that's how our, our, our world is working because most people are like, you know, having this romantic fantasy that we can just be all equal and, you know, we, it we just, it, it doesn't work. Nobody is just giving money away yeah. and, um, you know, we always kind of like, yeah, we always need incentives, especially in the countries like in um, Peru where the rainforest is, they don't care. So they don't, they care probably about the rainforest, but they don't care about the climate change or yes, stuff. So because they have to feed their family and um, when we are just coming there and, you know, um, buying the forest away and telling them, yeah, go away, that's now protected. They were like, what the hell? <laughs> I, I just want to do farming and I just need money. So, and with that um, technology, we can like um, um, integrate the community. We can like... Um, let them participate mm -hmm. um, of the token, um, yeah, um, how can you say that, of the token uh, incomes or like the, mm -hmm. the revenue, the revenues. Uh, so yeah, I think they are really good projects. So I, I read a really good quote like some weeks ago already, it's from Charles Hoskinson, he's the founder of the Cardano blockchain. Mm -hmm. And he once said, and I have to rephrase a little because I don't know it exactly, but he said mm -hmm. something like, the target or the goal is to get um, people needs and people greed, so what they want to have, together with a positive outcome. And in that case, a positive outcome regarding the economy and regarding the world. And I think this is what really like comes together in the refi space because you have like people who want to earn money, which is totally normal, totally fine, and everybody has to earn money. But yeah. they also care about the environment. Yeah. And I think I really, I really like that. And so this is from my point of view, something super positive. So yes, I think uh, this is something super important that people really take care about the environment. And uh, Nadine, you just said like, you have already like around 500 projects. So yeah. what are they, I mean this, at the beginning you said like the space is still super small, but now you said like you have around 500 projects and I think even growing, so the number is growing. Yeah. So who is working in that space and why already 500? And how do you know if which project you kind of want to choose? How you can, can you kind of navigate through that space? That's yeah. Right. I mean, nobody has time to go through 500 projects and then decide what just, which one is the best. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, that's that's why we had the idea to particular because we figured how, that's the space it's like super dynamic and there's coming more and more ideas and also different approaches even in co2 um, they are like have they are not doing the same thing they're all like having their own methodologies and adding more methods to the methodology so it's really hard for somebody who's not in the space to understand uh, what it is about and especially where's quality and where maybe not and um, we, we were like okay we have to focus at first on the co2 um, um, startups um, because that's already hard enough to figure out about them 
and classify them. Um, and um, there are like around 250 of those carbon related uh, projects. And then of course, after we uh, figured everything out about the carbon and uh, um, we already have it in our database, but also like filling out the gap and uh, create in the end like a rating. It will take a little bit. And then of course we have like other, I would say asset classes. Mm -hmm. And um, I already mentioned it, uh, we are talking about uh, supply chain traceability, There's, for instance, uh, they are called fish coin. So oh, they okay. figured out that uh, fish are got throwing away a lot and they like um, incentivize the fishermen to collect data and um, they calculate it then and then they're kind of like paying so the fishermen are not like fishing more than they need because it's just thrown away. Um, then we have, uh, what do we else have, circular economy, um, also biodiversity uh, token, there is also one really, really great project in Asia, they're incentivizing people uh, who are living with uh, forest elephants, because those forest elephants have a positive um, footprint, I would say. Okay, and nice. um, Yeah, and that's how they collect data and use, and there's also so much data um, yeah, I and, can imagine. and we're like okay this is more data doesn't mean always it's more transparent and the space aims to be more transparent and but they're like kind of like we yeah we do the the problems from the classical market and that's why we are like okay we don't have time climate change is not waiting and we have to figure it out now and not waiting like for a normal market mechanism to solve the you know the problem with the bad and the good project it takes too long Yes. So what I what, what what you said, and I think it's super interesting. The CO two topic about the carbon credits. I've heard it. I personally have heard it already several times, and I was already reading some things about that. But about the other topics, uh, like you said, the fish uh, token and things like that, I haven't heard anything about it. Yeah. So I think the the topic is still small. And mm. another thing I've read is like in 2030, I guess the carbon market should be big, like 50 billion. Yeah. Because around 2,000 uh, companies companies made like a net zero pledge and so it's still small at the at the, at the point of time but yeah. there will be uh, many things ongoing in the space definitely and so what are your thoughts on the conference and refi is it yeah. already like a huge topic here or is it like not so many people are involved in that space i'm surprised um i mean it's a uh, it's a little bit. You can you can see a little bit here. There's like one uh, panel discussion with Ross, kind of like about sustainability in Web3, um, which was really great. But it's not a lot compared to, of course, there is this whole um, DeFi area and um, you know uh, uh, identity, security, and all those stuff. So Reva is a little bit underrepresented yet. But I think it will be grow um, because um, last night I was also invented in the city. Um, there was like a refi meetup. Um, some people organized it, and I and there I already met a lot of people. And I was like, oh, crazy! It's like it's growing, and it's great to, to talk to them. And yeah, when I talk to people here from the conference, um, and I tell I told them, yeah, I'm working in the refi space. They didn't know about that. And I said, oh, I thought at least the people in Web three know about us, but or, they sometimes and, don't. They don't, and I'm like, okay, that's, that's crazy. Yeah, I mean, what I because I'm working, I was working in the VC space and now startup acceleration, and sometimes people expect me to know everything in every area more or less. Mm. But there are like so many areas, yeah. and like we are at the moment uh, super agnostic, so we don't have like that focus area. And so, of course, there are so many things I don't know because yeah. there are like so many different areas, and I'm always yeah. trying to to understand at least the basics. Yeah. But it's super hard to, to hard keep to up yeah. on everything. It's like nearly impossible. It is. It is. It's. It's. it's I'm honestly. I also don't know anything. Uh, uh, like everything. I was wanted to say <laughs> anything. Everything. <laughs> we are trying to uh, improve. Yeah. And like trying to get better every day. Yeah. So there's like. Because we are kind of getting thrown out of that place here, so they already <laughs> asked us whether we can leave. So it's getting like the conference is now getting really more crowded. Mm. So normally we start with one question, but we didn't start with it, so maybe we can kind of finish it. Yeah. We always ask our guests whether they can explain or how they would explain their job and their everyday life to their grandmother. Oh yeah, that's a really hard question <laughs> because my parents, they don't, or my family in general, they don't get what I'm doing, and they they didn't even get it when I was in the classical work. Like like when I said I, I'm working in product management, they're already, 
so they don't even get that. But um, usually what we are trying to do also in ReFi, we're trying to change the language because we don't want to put the technology in front. It should be just in the back, like like cloud, you know, like cloud software. And nobody knows also how it works, like when you're not an IT person, but it is working and you know, and you know the advantages and that's how it should be also in, in blockchain. So. We are always explaining it with projects. So I'm like, yeah, so there are different projects and there are good projects and bad projects. And we're trying to figure out who are the good ones and who are the bad ones and analyzing it and helping them also to get better. And then they usually, ah, okay. I mean, I still don't get it, but it sounds interesting. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, great. <laughs> yeah, so it's tough. But yeah, it's, uh, it's a totally new space. And especially if you're not into tech, um, it's even more difficult. To it is. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. So thank you so much. It was a pleasure having you here today. Yeah. Thank you. And yeah. Let's enjoy the conference. Let's enjoy yeah, the rest the of the day. day. Let's make some more connections. Yes. And yeah, let's meet with some nice people. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye bye.